Hi, this video is to show you how to solve the uh, MRP explosion problem. I have the problem here, a table that shows the cross requirement inventory, scheduled receipts and scheduled issues. Also the lead time, this LT is lead time, two weeks. Um, each one of these uh, numbers is one week, is one period, could be also months, could be days. But in this case, let's say it's weeks. Week one, two, three, and so on. So the lead time is two weeks. Safety stocks 15 units. And LS is lot size, is the size of each lot of each batch we're going to produce every time we need to produce. Okay. So I'm gonna use all this piece of information to 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 kind of solve this problem. So the first step is like using Excel to replicate this this information and be able to move to move from from here okay so what we really want to know is this table what this table is showing you this table or this table what they are showing you is that on week three i have to produce uh, 200 units i need i need 200 components to feed maybe another part of our product to then build the product for sales and distribution okay here scheduled issue is an issue that we have that we have to produce 20 units maybe is a special order or something in week two we have this scheduled issue of having 20 parts 20 components 20 products or pieces that are going to compose up the product that we're gonna sell so remember the MRP exposure is getting our full product and breaking down the product into components and one table of that is like establishing the gross requirements when I, I need this component one of these components if I explode the product into its components I get each one of these components and build a table like that because I need to know when I need these pieces, when I need these components to be able to build the product. And also it tells me not only how many units I need, but also when I need. I need in week three, I need in week six and nine, and also in week two and seven. Okay, so this is telling me what I need and how many units I need of these components to help build my product. But to be able to know um, if I, I have, for example, enough inventory or if I have enough uh, components to satisfy this gross requirement, this demand or the schedule issues, I need to compute the net requirement. So our job is to do in, what is the net requirement. And also, if uh, I need any, any, um, any extra units, if I need some demand, I have to come up with a plan, P, plan, order, receipt, which tells me when I, if I need the net requirements, when I need something, I have to receive this something uh, by the time I, that I need. But to receive, I need to release a plan, order, release. I have to release a production plan order so I can receive. So I release an order to receive the units and match the net requirement. That's what we're doing, okay? Uh, so let's start the first step after like laying, like designing this table in Excel and kind of complementing this table with these variables. The, the first computation is the inventory. I need to know how much inventory I'm going to have during all this time, okay? So um, my inventory here is going to be equal to inventory for week two at the end of week two is going to be everything that I have left in week one plus any scheduled receipts I'm getting that are extra units for my like production plus everything that I'm receiving based on my planned order that I plan to receive minus everything that I'm using in my gross requirement minus on top of the requirements anything that I'm scheduled as like an issue okay so this is how I have the balance 
of my inventory. Okay, so that's the balance I I have. I I had uh, 120 units in inventory at the end of the week one, and then during the week two I used 20. Now I have 100. I can copy this formula to all the cells. They're gonna be negative sometimes, but as we move on with the net or net requirement and all other information, they're going to change. Okay. So okay, I'm done with the. I'm done with the um, inventory. Now what I need is my my net requirement. I have to compute my net requirement. But to compute my net requirement, I need my safety stock, which is 15. Okay. So my safety stock here is going to be used in the computation of the net requirement. The net requirement I have to compute when I have a scheduled issue and, and or when I have a gross requirement okay when I'm using parts pieces and components to build my product so here we have a schedule uh, a schedule issue I can see that I have enough in that I have 100 units I, I mean I had 120 units and I used 20 and I have to have a hundred left over, which is higher than my safety stock. The inventory has has to be always equal or higher than safe, the safety stock. So I, I really don't need to compute the net requirement for this one because of these reasons. But let me compute uh, just for you to see how it is. Okay. So the net requirement here is going to be equal to my gross requirement minus everything that I have at the end of the previous week plus, uh, I'm sorry, minus my scheduled receipts plus my scheduled issues plus I have to keep the safe, safety inventory or safety stock. So this is how I compute um, the net requirement. Let me go ahead and lock the safety stock because I'm going to copy this formula but I want to, to maintain the safety stock as where it is so I'm going to lock this cell by pressing F4 okay so that's my net requirement of negative 85 units when it's negative it means I don't have any net requirement only when that positive numbers is that I, I have a requirement in this case as I told you we have enough inventory since week one to satisfy this is scheduled issue and the leftover is higher than safety stock. I'm gonna just copy this formula to all other cells related to the net requirement just to see what the requirements for the other weeks are. So because I, I just copy and because this number is negative, I can go ahead and delete it because there is no net requirement in this week too. Okay? Now let me take a look at week three. Week three has a positive net requirement. Okay, if I take a look, uh, everything is in the right place in the formula. So my net requirement here is 115 units. Okay, so um, how much I have to receive to the plan order receipt? How many units I have to receive here in order to match, satisfy the minimum of this um, yeah, requirement of 115? So I have I can only produce lot sizes of of 40 units. So I, I can produce one batch of 40 units, or I can produce two batches of 40 units, or I can produce three batches of 40 units. But every time that I produce a batch, it has to be 40 units. So what is the multiple of 40 that matches this net requirement? The multiple of 40 that matches this net requirement is 120. It's three times the batch size okay so 120 units if I receive through the plan on the receipt 120 units I satisfy all the gross requirement and I keep 20 units in inventory which is higher than what is necessary for my safety stock okay but to receive these units in week three I have to release a 
plan order, a production plan order, two weeks before. One, two, I have to release an order in the first week. So here I have to release an order of 120 units. So I have one and two units to produce and have it ready for to attend my, my gross requirement. So this is the process. You know your gross requirement, you compute your inventory, you then you compute your net requirement and keep checking wherever you have a positive net requirement, then you have to receive orders and then you have to release orders. Okay. So in this one, the question is, is it positive? No, that's a negative number, which means I don't have any net requirement. I can delete. I don't have any net requirement here because it's negative, so I can delete. Here I have a positive number, which means I need 140 units in order to match this demand of one, um, 180 units. And I also have a, a, at least an inventory of 15 units. Okay, So I have to produce, I have to receive here in this week uh, units to cover this net requirement. So what is, how many batches? I have to produce four batches of 40 in order to have 160 here and have, uh, as a result, 35 units in inventory, which is higher than 15 and satisfy everything. Let's say instead of producing 160, I produce 120. 120 is going to re result in a negative um, five units in inventory, which means I'm missing five units to satisfy this gross requirement. So producing three batches of 40, which means 120 is not enough. I have to produce 160, okay? And to receive these 160 units here, I have to release an order two, two weeks before, okay? Okay, now I have this scheduled issue here. I have a scheduled issue and um, I, I don't have enough inventory because the inventory for the previous week, week is 35 units and I need 55 units. That's the reason I have a net requirement here, which is 35, okay? So to satisfy this satisfy this net requirement of 35, I can produce uh, only 40. I don't need to produce more than, more than 40 because I don't want to carry inventory. So I produce 40, and then I have 20 as inventory, and 20 is higher than the safety stock of 15, okay? So to receive this, um, or the, these units here, I have to release an order two weeks later, which is in 40, yeah, which is in week five. Okay, this number is negative, I can delete because I don't have an ad requirement. Now I have an ad requirement of 283. So, how, uh, how many units I have to produce minimum to satisfy 283? That is a multiple of 40. So, if I produce seven times 40, seven batches of 40. I produce a total of 280 units. This satisfy, I have a positive inventory here. The problem is the inventory is less than the safety stock, the minimum safety stock of 15. So I cannot have only 12 units because my safety stock is minimum 15 units. That's the reason I cannot produce only seven batches of 40 and have 280. And is less than that requirement. The net requirement say, is 283 you have to produce at least 283 at least you can produce you can produce more than 283 but at least 283 okay i was uh, just like playing with you the idea that if i produce less than 283 i can save some money but i don't satisfy the requirement of having 15 units of safety stock here which which the net requirement is taking into account for this reason i have to produce um, instead of seven, I have to produce eight batches of 40 units, which is 320 units. Now I have a, an inventory of 52, which is higher than the safety stock of 15. And in this week, I don't have any net requirement. And this is the solution. This is how you can think in terms of how to work with this MRP explosion idea and, and coming up with this table and why we cannot have like um, a smaller number than the net requirement because because we also have to take into account the uh, safety stock here okay uh, that's all i hope you uh, understand better now thank you